VOD is generally measured as a five-day test. That's why sometimes we also call it as VOD five. So while we could imagine a test in which oxygen required to degrade completely a sample of water, waste would be measured. But such a test would take too long to be practical. As a result, it has now become a standard practice in most of the scientific experiment to simply measure and report oxygen demand over a shorter period of five days, which we also called as BOD five. Releasing that BODU. BODU here refers as BOD of a unseeded sample which have not been diluted which may be higher so as a general observation we can say that BODU means BOD of unseeded sample is always higher than 5 days BOD there is a general formula which have also been mentioned in a standard reference book by Gilbert M. Master that BOD 5 days is calculated with the help of TO then how we calculate this POD over 5 days? We take DO of the initial day, means first day. Subtract DO of the final day, means fifth day. Divided by P. P stands for dilution factor. So DOI here in the formula stands for initial value of oxygen present in the water. DOF stands for the final value. P is referred as dilution factor. Dilution factor is equal to the volume of wastewater divided by the volume of wastewater plus volume of water added for dilution. I am again repeating dilution factor P can be calculated by the volume of wastewater divided by volume of wastewater plus volume of water added for dilution. We can also add a small amount of information here that maximum photosynthesis in water body by phytoplanktons or maximum photosynthesis in general takes place in red and violet light. So now we will be observing some of the feature for the BOD test. First is that for a BOD test light must be kept out to check that only photosynthesis by alga present into the water so that there should be no contamination in our BOD reading by the photosynthesis done by alga so it should be kept out of the reach from light then water should be sealed to keep it away of from atmospheric oxygen so that we should not have any contamination in our reading and the temperature required for BOD test is 20 degrees Celsius or 293 Kelvin this is very important why 20 degrees Celsius because 20 degrees Celsius is optimum temperature required for the metabolism of microorganisms present in the water and for human it is for human body most of the microbes or enzymes works better at 25 degrees Celsius now we will be talking about COD or chemical oxygen demand some organic matters such as cellulose lignin chitin phenol benzene they do not undergo biodegradation they are also referred as recalcitrant substance and the order of their toughness to degradation is as follow lignin chitin sorry chitin followed by lignin followed by cellulose followed by hemicellulose followed by starch so lignin is more most tough to degrade 
not lignin, chitin. Chitin is most tough to degrade, followed by lignin, followed by cellulose, followed by hemicellulose, followed by starch. So this question I have been asked many times in most of the competitive exams. Some of the species like pesticide being toxic to microorganism are also non-biodegradable in water. In a COD test, we add a strong oxidizing agent which is used to oxidize all organics, means biodegradable as well as non-biodegradable substances. Rather than recycling on microorganism to do that job, so we here are not relying on microbes which will degrade the substances. Instead, we are adding a chemical which is helping us to degrade both biodegradable as well as non-biodegradable substances. COD, it is a much quicker than BOD test. For easily biodegradable matter, generally we observe both BOD and COD will have similar values. Otherwise, if you see, COD would be always higher than BOD. COD does not provide any information about the rate at which the actual biodegradation takes place. However, it can be used to estimate BOD U means BOD unseated. Now, some of the generalized relationship between BOD and COD. Some of the literature says COD is around 1.25 times of the BOD. And COD is always greater than BOD. BOD U which is BOD unseated is more than BOD 5 days. And if we have to establish a kinetic relationship between BODU which is unseated and 5 days BOD then BODU equal to BOD 5 day divided by 1 minus e to the power minus kt where k is the rate constant and t is the time in day. For more details on this BOD and COD concept it has been nicely explained in water pollution part in the book called Introduction to Environmental Engineering by Gilbert M. Master which is a very standard book for this concept. Now we will be talking something about the oxygen sac curve which itself is very important. So on the y-axis we have given the dissolved oxygen content and on the x-axis we have shown the downstream direction. So here we have shown the saturation level of DO with the dotted line and the point source. Then in the center we have shown the critical point where DO would be minimum and on the right side we have shown the curve. So it is like a inverted bell shaped curve. If we go on the left half before the critical point, you can observe here at the point source there will be very low DO and very high BOD. So what happened here is depletion due to consumption of oxygen by microorganism because the BOD was higher and depletion is the dominated process here over reaeration. So that's why we observe very high BOD and very low DO. Coming to the critical point, at critical point where DO would be minimum and at the critical point reaeration is approximately equal to the depletion. Coming to the right half where we can observe that the DO start improving and DO is more and the BOD is less. So why it happened? Because oxygen start increasing as reaeration become dominating process in the right half as compared to depletion. So we can see it as like in the right half reaeration dominates over depletion, DO increase, BOD decrease. In the left half depletion is dominated over reaeration. So that's why DO decrease and BOD increase. At critical point, the quality of the water would be worst in terms of DO because we have 
minimum value of do so how we can define a do sac curve so simultaneous action of oxidation of waste and reoration produces a curve which is called as do sac curve it means if we want to study oxidation of waste in a water body and reaeration simultaneously then the curve drawn is called as do sac curve now we will be coming on thermal pollution which is the next process or the type of pollution near generally thermal pollution is observed near nuclear power plant which are built for electricity or energy production or thermal power plant which are also meant for electricity production now we will be observing some of the effects of thermal pollution first we see increase rate of metabolism both catabolism as well as anabolism increase all of you know catabolism is the process of breakdown of complex substances into simple substances anabolism is the process of formation of complex substances from simple one so this could be summarized like a flow chart as the temperature increase due to thermal pollution rate of metabolism increase both anabolism as well as catabolism which results in demand of oxygen increase which results in depletion of do of the water body and the most of aquatic life die and decrease in number coming to the second point rate of decomposition of organic matter would also increase sorry which cause higher demand of oxygen which results in depletion of oxygen in the stream because with increase in temperature the rate of decomposition of organic matter increase which will demand more oxygen and which will cause a depletion of oxygen in the stream in the third point we have written there that there is a change in composition of aquatic life so you can see on the x axis we have shown temperature on the y axis we have shown phytoplankton population so if we talk about blue green algae it has been observed that with increase in temperature the population of the blue green algae will increase because there exists some blue green algae which are resistant or tolerant to high temperature on the other hand diatoms the population of diatoms will start declining with increase in temperature so blue green algae which release some of the toxins which may cause the death of phytoplanktons and this toxin is nothing these are the toxins like sex toxin blue green algae ox also consume oxygen which results in depletion in oxygen content of the stream this is a well known fact now we will be talking details of eutrophication so all of us know eutrophication eu means true trophic means food or nutrition so the process of nutrient enrichment especially nitrate and phosphate and consequent loss of species diversity due to the lack of oxygen in a water body is called as eutrophication so eutrophication could be defined as the process of nutrient enrichment especially nitrate and phosphate and consequent loss of species diversity due to lack of oxygen in a water body is called eutrophication eutrophication could be classified in two types one is natural eutrophication second could be called as man made artificial or cultural eutrophication we will be studying them one by one first we will be talking about natural eutrophication it occurs in a very long time due to addition of nutrients produced by forest fire or erosion of soil or weathering of rocks or in the other words we can say that fact